what I love about React, and sometimes hate, to be honest, is that there is always a place for mystery there. Take the key attribute, for example. We all use it every single time we code any list in React. But how many of us actually know what it's all about? What exactly should be put there? How does it work? What is the purpose of it? Try stopping this video and ask your colleagues those questions right now. What will be the response? Most likely, the first thing that you'll hear is that React needs it to identify components and that the key should be unique. If you don't stop here and press a little bit further, you might hear that arrays index as a key is a bad practice, or that it's needed to prevent re-renders. Most of this is either not true or just incomplete. So let's take a look today at why do we actually need the key? What will happen if we use a random value as a key? What actually makes a good key? How to make lists as performant as they can be and prevent the renders of their items? What will happen if we use arrays index as a key? And how to use key to reset state and whether we should actually use it or not? Let's start with the purpose. It's all about arrays of data here. Imagine yourself in a room with a bunch of identical kittens wearing different hats. And while you quickly left the room to get some coffee, I added another kitten to the bunch. When you return to the room, I ask you to describe to me what has changed. What will be the response? Since you don't know the kittens' names yet, the only thing that you can do is just go by the order and describe them to me. First kitten is not wearing the hat anymore, second and third kittens now wearing different hats, and there is a fourth kitten that wasn't here before. But it's not exactly true, isn't it? In reality, I just added a new kitten at the very beginning and nothing more. The rest of the kittens stay exactly the same as they were. If only I named them before making those changes, isn't it? And this is exactly what React has to deal with when we loop over an array and try to render identical components. If we don't name them explicitly, the only way for React to identify between re-renders which one has changed and which one is new is by their position in the array. And since it's not the most optimal way to do so, it gives us the key attribute so that we can name our kittens explicitly. And it's very important for React to understand which component is which so that it can decide which component needs to be removed and unmounted and removed from the screen, which component is new and needs to be created from scratch and mounted, and which component has already been there and just needs to be updated with the new data. So what will happen when a component with list re-renders? React will go through the list of elements, will see that the key on those hasn't changed, and it will just re-render them as usual, same as any component with children. If another item in this array appears, for example, if I click a button that adds another kitten, then React will see that this key wasn't here during the previous render, and it will create and mount this new component associated with this key. The rest of the keys haven't changed, so it will just re-render them as usual. Similarly, if instead I delete an item from the array, React will see that this key is not there anymore, and it will remove and unmount the component. The rest of the components, again, they stay the same, and they will just re-render. And now to the fun part. What if, instead of adding or removing items in the array, I just change a key on already existing component? without actually changing anything else. Well, React will see that previous key doesn't exist anymore, so it will delete and unmount the component that is associated with it, and that the new key appears that didn't exist in the previous render. So it will create a component from scratch and mount it back. We haven't changed the data, only the key attribute. But React recognized it as a new component, unmounted it, and mounted it back, recreating it completely from scratch. So this actually should answer the question we had at the very beginning. What will happen if we just use some random values as keys? In this case, React will see that keys on all components change between re-renders. It will unmount the entire list, remove it from the screen, 
and then recreate and remount it from scratch. Consequences of this can be pretty bad. Mounting is usually much slower than a simple re-render of existing components. Also, if those lists had some state, all the data from the state will just disappear into the void. And if any of those components had focus, it will also disappear. In short, don't ever do it, ever. What should we do instead? Well, there is only one rule here, other than the key should be unique. The key should also be stable between re-renders. So, if your data has any unique identifiable information, like an ID, key, index, or anything similar, use that. If it doesn't, and you have no control over it, for example, if it's coming from some external REST endpoint, then you would have to generate those keys right after you get this data. Just make sure that the generating process is again stable between re-renders and always produces the same result, even if this component also re-renders. But let's assume that you got the keys right, they are unique and stable. Now what? If you look at your components in the list, you will see that even if you set the key properly, they still re-render, every time the parent re-renders. And indeed, the key doesn't actually help with re-renders by itself in any way. If we actually need to prevent re-renders in the list, then we need to use other techniques in combination with the key. For example, and it's usually the easiest way, we could just wrap our list components in a react.memo. That way, when React tries to re-render those items, it will stop and check whether their props changed or not. If the props stay the same, items won't be re-rendered. Just make sure that you memoize all non-primitive props of the list properly. Check out the linked video on some of the caveats of doing that. One tiny mistake there and your memoization doesn't work. The most important thing here to remember is that key trumps everything else. If again we'll try to use random value as a key, what will happen? React first looks at whether the key has changed or not before even looking at any memoization. So if the key is random, it will change with every re-render, and then regardless of whether a component is memoized or not, it will remount. Memoization here will not work. In the previous examples, we assumed that some unique value like an ID is available to us for use for keys. But what if we don't have them in my data, and we don't actually want to generate them? Can't I just use the array index as a key? It's guaranteed to be unique and stable between re-renders, and that's exactly what we need. What's so terrible will happen? Why people say it's a bad practice? And the answer is, you totally can. It's not a bad practice at all. It just has certain limitations that you need to take into account before doing so. Let's take a look at that example a little bit closer. If a normal re-render happens, it will behave as expected. Items are memoized, the props hasn't changed, so they won't re-render. Everything is okay. But what will happen if I add another item to the very top of this array? All existing values will shift their position and will get the new keys, and the new added value will have the key zero now. From React perspective, only the item with the key number three is new. So React will mount the last component on the list. As for the rest of them, the key already exists. So React will think that it needs to just re-render existing components. And from its perspective, all props of those components will change. The item with the key zero, for example, used to have the value mittens. Now it has a value badger. So it will just re-render every single existing component with the new data. And the result, even though all components are memoized, they all re-render, as if memoization doesn't exist. It gets even more interesting if some of those components hold some state. For example, if by clicking on a component you can highlight it and store whether this component is highlighted or not in component's local state. Now, when you add another item at the top. From React perspective, the item with the key zero was the one that holds the state. And after a render happens, it will continue to be so. So our freshly added item will be the one that is actually selected, not the one that we selected before. 
And exactly the same story will be if we just rearrange items or remove one or two of them from the middle. If you want to see for yourself how it works, links to the code examples are in the description. If instead of array indexes, we used some ID that was tied to actual data, not the data's position in the array, the result would be much more intuitive and would make much more sense. Let's take a look. Exactly the same data, only this time we use IDs as keys. If we add another item at the very beginning, React will see that only the item with the new ID is actually new. The rest of them are still exactly the same and more importantly, the props haven't changed at all. So only the first item will be mounted, the rest of them will sit quietly and won't ever re-render. And if one of them has local state, the state will stay at the component where it's supposed to be. And exactly the same story with rearranging the order or removing items from the array. None of them uh, will actually unnecessarily render. From that behavior, we can actually extract rules when it's safe to use index as key. If your array is static, i.e. you don't add, remove, or rearrange items inside of it, or if it's dynamic, but you don't memoize items and you don't have local state in them then it's okay to use array index as key. One final thing worth mentioning about the key is that we can use it on any component, not only in lists. This pattern is usually called state reset, and it's usually used when you need to force a component to reset itself and all of its local state to the default value. It's usually used on uncontrolled components, those that have state and don't provide a way for you to control it. Imagine, for example, that in addition to this list of kittens, I have some complicated form where I can add details about the selected kitten, its breed, its color, which hat it's wearing, and so on. When I navigate between those kittens, I want to reset that form to its default empty state. One way to do it, other than turning this entire page into a big controlled component, would be just to add the key attribute to the form. Now, every time the selected value changes, the key will change as a result, the big form will reset itself, and all of its state will return to its default. But be careful with this pattern. Although we call it state reset, in reality what it does is it's unmounting the previous component, removes it from the screen, and then remounts it back. It can be slow, so performance can suffer. And also everything that is supposed to be triggered on, on mounting, like initial data fetching, will be triggered every single time. So use it wisely. That is all for today. Hope you learned a few useful things and feel more confident with the key attribute. If you feel like reading instead of watching, I write quite a lot about patterns like this in my blog. Don't hesitate to check it out and see you next time.